I wanted to base this video on the storyboarding aspect of the film because um, it really played such an important part in holding things together on set and in when it came to post-production. So I was just going to run you through some of the original storyboard concepts and uh, some of the rushes that we filmed afterwards. We used a couple of different techniques of storyboarding in the film, but mainly we use video storyboards because um, video storyboards are the best to show people how the scene's going to play out. And also just for me in the edit, I wouldn't even need to worry about how shots were going to cut together because I would have already seen them beforehand. Usually if I was just with Alex, um, I'd just give the camera to him, he would film me for a bit and I'd run through the action. Um, sometimes I'd get him to stand in place of the actor and, and just give me a good rough estimate of where, where the actor could stand, where the light might hit him. For the chase sequence in the film, um, we shot the storyboards on a mobile because we weren't entirely sure what would look good and because we knew we were shooting some mechanic, um, we knew it would be quite shaky anyway. So. Um, it gave us a good idea and it gave the actors a good idea on what would look good, what would look best in the final letter. If actors were coming over to do a rehearsal for a scene, um, you know, we wouldn't even tell them. Sometimes we would just record them on the mobile and, you know, while they're getting on with the rehearsal, we could think about the composition of the shot um, to help fine tune things um, later on. Once we had cast Santini, um, we still weren't sure on exactly how we were going to shoot the scene. So uh, during one of the rehearsals, we just brought the camera with us. You know, did all kinds of crazy shots, punched in, you know, pulled out, uh, you know, loads of crazy angles. And then on the day, we actually quite quite liked that. So we just went with that style and did all kinds of things, crossed the line, you know, and really cashed in on those expressions. Sometimes, uh, if we didn't actually have access to a location. Um, we would just run through the scene um, and imagine the surrounding. For instance, in this scene, I asked the Dem to just imagine he was in a boiler room and that he was kicking a pipe in. And uh, and then later on, when we actually find a location, we can adjust for the action. You know, and, and the guys were constantly trying to find things just to imagine the scene using small props, whatever they could find, just to try and simulate the scene some way. Uh, in the storyboard so that when it, it came round to actually shooting it we knew it would um, it would be something similar. That's another thing, if you, if you want to keep the budget down uh, when you're shooting on something like film the last thing you want to do is get more than one take and we certainly couldn't afford to get more than one take on 35. Every, every shot has a price tag so that's why when it came to video storyboarding this scene um, it did save us time but it also saved us money in the end. These storyboards were done a little differently. Um, because we couldn't get video, because we really only had a van for two hours on the day, we'd have to try and imagine the elements of the frame which we couldn't actually get hold of. Um, and Alex would just draw them in on his phone and uh, would then reframe for that shot. You know, thinking back to it, we, we had an hour and a half to shoot this whole fight sequence. You know, so, so that's why I thought it was worth doing a, a video on storyboards because one of the reasons we managed to get the budget of the film below two grand to begin with is from all the pre-planning and the thoughts and the ideas which went in before the production start. That's probably one of the biggest assets to the film. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching and uh, if you're interested uh, there'll be more videos being uploaded sometime soon.